This is Shravanti, working as assistant professor, Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about what is desalination. Is, uh, in this desalination method, we are going to discuss reverse osmosis and also discuss defluoridation. So, desalination of water. So, what is the meaning of desalination? So, removal of common salt from water. So, common salt means uh, like NaCl, sodium chloride. So, removal of common salt from water is called desalination. So, remove in this process, removal of common salt and also other impurities from sea water or breakish water. So, it is suitable for drinking and other usages. So, this process is called desalination. Removal of common salt, for example, NaCl from water sea water or breakish water is called desalination. It is suitable for drinking and other uses also. So, the water containing dissolved salts, dissolved salts means like hardness causing ions, minerals or different, different impurities present in water. So, water containing dissolved salts with salty or breakage taste, with salty or breakage taste is called breakish water. The water containing dissolved salts with salty taste or breakish taste. So, this water is considered as breakish water. So, based on this quantity of dissolved solids present in water, the quantity of dissolved salts present in water. So, water is classified into three types fresh water, breakish water, and sea water. So, based on dissolved salts means like hardness causing salts or any other minerals or any other input is present in water. So, based on this dissolved salt, salts quantity present in water, so water is classified into three types. So, first one is fresh water. Fresh water. So, water containing dissolved solids are less than 1000 ppm. It containing fresh water, it containing less than 1000 ppm of dissolved salts or dissolved solids. So, this water is considered as fresh water. Water containing less than 1000 ppm of dissolved solids. So, the dissolved salts quality or quantity is less than 1000 ppm. So, this water is considered as fresh water. So, if the water containing contains more than 1000 ppm of dissolved salts or less than 35,000 ppm of dissolved solids. More than 1000 and less than 35,000 ppm of dissolved solids present in water. So, that water is considered as breakish water. That water is considered as breakish water. Next, this sea water third type. So, it containing more than 35,000. It containing more than 35,000 of dissolved solids, more than 35,000 ppm of dissolved solids present in water. So, that water is considered as sea water. So, based on dissolved solids and that quantity of this dissolved solids present in water, water is classified into three types, fresh water, sea water and breakish water. So, one common method for desalination or desalination is carried out by using reverse osmosis method. This is the most common desalination method is reverse osmosis. It is also called as RO process. RO process. It is a one of the water purification method which is used in this purification of in water technology. So it is carried out by using uh, here we are using semi permeable membrane. In this reverse osmosis method, it is one of the purification method. In this case, we are using semi permeable membrane to for what purpose we are using to remove ions, molecules, or large particles, or any other suspended impurities which are present in water. It can be removed in this RO method or reverse osmosis process by using membranes, semi permeable membranes. Now, let's discuss what is reverse osmosis. One of the common method of uh, desalination process is reverse osmosis. So, reverse osmosis 
first we will discuss what is the meaning of osmosis so osmosis means uh, two different concentration of solutions the one is high concentration one is low concentration or two different concentration of solutions separated by semi permeable membrane so in this case when we applied pressure at low concentration side so the solvent flows from low concentration to high concentration the process is called osmosis so two different concentration of solution separated by semi permeable membrane when we applied pressure the solvent flows from low concentration to high concentration this process is called osmosis but reverse osmosis means reverse osmosis so what is the meaning reverse osmosis the process is reversed to the solvent when we applied pressure at high concentration side the solvent flows from high concentration to low concentration this is called reverse osmosis in osmosis in these two methods we are, we are using two different concentration of solutions two different concentration of solutions separated by semi permeable membrane so in this case when we applied pressure at low concentration side the solvent flows from low concentration to high concentration that process is called osmosis but reverse osmosis means when we applied osmotic pressure on high concentration side so in this case the solvent flows from high concentration to low concentration it is a reverse osmosis that's why it is called reverse osmosis and it is also called as electrodialysis electrodialysis so in this case this method is mainly used for purification of water so we can separate it salt water from so hot drinking water we can purify it. that means hot water converted to soft water so in this case we applied pressure is 15 to 40 kg per cm2 pressure is applied for separating the water from its contaminants we can remove any ions or this causing ions or any other minerals or any other impurities present in water we can remove by applied this 15 to 40 kg per cm2 pressure we can remove all these contaminants which are present in this water so the membrane used for this purpose generally this uh, reverse osmosis purpose we are using semi permeable membrane so this membrane is generally made up of cellulose acetate cellulose butyrate or polymethyl acrylate polymethyl acrylate and polyamide polymers and polyamide polymers so this process is also called as super filtration this process is also called as super filtration or hyper filtration it is also called as electrodialysis so you see the diagram here are two different concentration of solutions for example here sea water and pure water we are taking this two are having two different concentration generally we know that sea water is having a uh, brackish salty tasty so compared to normal water it is having high concentration so sea water and pure water two different concentration of solution separated by this is a semi permeable membrane this is a semi permeable membrane so when we apply osmotic pressure the solvent flows from high concentration to low concentration that means sea water converted to normal water or pure water through the semi permeable membrane so generally this membrane is made up of cellulose acetate or cellulose butyrate or cellulose acrylate etc so this process is also called as hyperfiltration or superfiltration or electrodialysis it is one of the purification method commonly used in this our water purification systems like aquaguard aquasure etc we are using this type of process rvo method only so here is a clearly explain this is a osmosis here reverse osmosis in this osmosis two different concentration of solution separated by semi permeable membrane this is the membrane so generally this membrane is made up of just now discussed cellulose acetate cellulose butyrate for example so when we applied osmotic pressure on low concentration side so the solvent flows from low concentration to high concentration this is called osmosis but in this reverse osmosis here also same 
two different concentration of solution separated by semi permeable membrane so when we applied pressure at high concentration side the solvent flows from high concentration to low concentration that means hot water sea water converted to normal drinking water or normal water this process is called reverse osmosis so what are the advantages of reverse osmosis so in this reverse osmosis is a widely used water purification technology it is widely used in water purification technology the top of several advantages nowadays most prefer this rho methods in this water purifiers or water technology there are several advantages so one is removal of contaminants removal of contaminants so by using this rho method we can remove all the contaminants which are present in water so here see rho is the highly effective at removing wide range of contaminants from water so it's including which type of contaminants or impurities present in water it's including dissolved salts heavy metals minerals bacteria virus and organic compounds so all these type of contaminants removed by using this rho process so this results is high quality and uh, purified water available producing by this method and second one is improper taste oh sorry improves taste and odor improve taste and odor so in this rho systems can significantly improve the taste and odor and overall quality of water by eliminating impurities and chemicals that may affect its palatability it gives pleasant taste odor it gives to water which are produced in this rho method first one is removal of contaminants by using rho method so it's including which type of contaminants is remove dissolved salts heavy metals minerals bacteria or virus or organic compounds so all this type of contaminants removed by using this rho methods or rho filters so in this case it producing water is the result of the water is high quality and purified water is available for producing and second one is improve taste and odor so it removes all the contaminants which are present in this water and also it removes chemicals so it produces a quality and taste and pleasant taste and odor also improves and third one is versatility so versatility means in this rho system it can be used to treat various water sources in this process it treated various water sources it's including brackish water as sea water and ground water so in this method we can remove different different types of water we can treat it so that is brackish water for example sea water and ground water so this makes it a versatile option for both residential and industrial applications both residential and industrial applications and next one is compact design in this rho system are often compact can be easily integrated into existing water treatment systems or installed under sinks in homes they don't require a lot of space designing also very and it takes a very less space easily we can uh, uh, fix it at homes under the sink it takes it requires a small space don't require a, a lot of space uh, next low maintenance so in this ro systems are relatively low maintenance so regularly changing the prep filters and periodic membrane replacement are the preliminary maintenance task so in this case already we know that they are all are we are using at homes also this water purification systems or uh, it maintains uh, also very low cost and in this case we are even frequently we are changing filters only with uh, depending on our usage we are frequently change filters so only this preliminary maintenance is filters replacement of filters so routine maintenance is simple and cost effective this is the main advantage we can easily change these filters and it available in less cost and next is energy efficiency 
so while r o does require energy to operate mainly in old uh, aquifer water purifiers it mainly for preservation it requires more energy but in modern r o systems are designed to be energy efficient compared to old uh, uh, water purifiers uh, it require old water purifiers it requires more energy consumption but in this uh, modern uh, water purifiers uh, but r o systems it designed to be energy efficient so it improves in technology how to be i uh, have reduced the energy consumption in this modern technology it reduces energy consumption of the systems over the years and next one is reduce the water waste or you know that why you, you, we are using this rho process it reduces the water wastages so in this case more water efficient than some other desalination method compared to other desalination method in this rho method it re reduces the water wastages and they can recover the significant portion of the feed water as purified water it reducing overall waste water overall water wastage and next one is most important quality assurance quality assurance so in this ro method reverse osmosis method it can consistently produce water with a known and controllable quality controllable quality this is essential for applications like uh, pharmaceutical industry pharmaceutical manufacturing food and beverage productions and laboratory also it gives clear assurance we can clearly use in this laboratories pharmaceutical applications in food productions etc we are using it gives quality assurance now let's go second topic is defluoridation nalgonda technique defluoridation nalgonda technique desalination is removal of common salt from water like nacl removal of common salt from water is called desalination it is carried out by using reverse osmosis but here defluoridation the removal of fluoride from water already we know that in nalgonda people they are facing this problem fluorosis problem they in this nalgonda area water it containing more fluoride so in that area people they are facing so many dental problems etc so this removal of fluoride from water is called defluoridation it is observed in this nalgonda area so that's why this technique is called nalgonda technique defluoridation nalgonda technique that means defluoridation is the removal of excess of fluoride from water removal of excess of fluoride from water so nalgonda technique is a simple technique and economical it is simple and economical so generally which methods are employed for this uh, reverse osmosis activated alumina and distillation methods are used to remove fluorine generally fluorine is removed by using which methods reverse osmosis activated alumina and some of the distillation method used for removal of fluoride from water in this nalgonda technique where fluoride is precipitated so in this nalgonda technique means we can remove excess fluoride present in water so in this case this uh, how can we remove this fluoride from this water so in this case fluoride is precipitated by using 500 mg per liter of alum when we are adding when we are adding alum as a coagulant in this water so it uh, creates flocks it reacts with fluoride and forms precipitates that means flock flocculation this method is called so when we are adding alum 500 grams milligrams per liter of alum added in the water in this uh, raw water so and also we are adding lime with small amount lime also we are adding and also we are adding bleaching powder 3 mg per liter for disinfection so in this nalgonda deep fluoridation nalgonda technique method we are adding uh, to raw water which one we are adding in this first step lime and also we are adding bleaching powder and also we'll add uh, alums as a coagulant so in this case it reacts with fluoride and forms uh, flocculation the precipitates are formed in this uh, water so generally bleaching powder is used for a disinfection purpose 
so you yeah, how can we uh, remove this uh, fluoride from this water so the first is raw water we are taking here and we'll add uh, lime and alum and also we'll add uh, lime plus alum plus bleaching powder so lime alum bleaching powder so all these three add in this raw water this is a process called flash mixing it is also called as first step this one rapid mixing rapid mixing that means within the seconds it forms precipitate and fluoride within the seconds it interacts with fluoride and forms flocks so that's why this method is called, uh, this step is called rapid mixing it takes very less time that means uh, below um, 30 seconds only and next it forms after some time it forms flocculation and flocks are formed that means precipitates formed and next it is passed through the sedimentation tank this is called sedimentation so flocks are, are all heavy objectives or uh, precipitates are settled down at bottom of this tank so this is process called sedimentation next pass it to the filtration in this case we are using filters to remove any other impurities or bacteria present in water and next it is storage in this storage tank finally we use domestic usage or industrial purpose or our drinking purpose we are using this water so in this way we can remove fluoride present in this water so what are the steps involved in this nalgonda technique so nalgonda technique it's involved rapid mixing just now discussed already so rapid mixing means we are adding chemicals uh, which type of chemicals we are adding lime alum and bleaching powder so all these three added in to raw water so this process is called rapid mixing and fastly it is interacts with fluoride and next it is followed by flocculation sedimentation it is followed by flocculation sedimentation filtration and disinfection so these are the steps involved in this analgonda technique first one is rapid mixing next flocculation sedimentation filtration and disinfection these are the steps involved in this defluoridation of analgonda technique so here alum used as a coagulant for purpose we are using this alum in this water it is forms flocks and it forms precipitate with fluoride ions it is called flocks and next in this process best carried out under alkaline conditions in this process best carried out under alkaline conditions so therefore that's why we are adding lime in alkaline condition it is very effective that's why we are adding lime and for disinfection purpose we are adding bleaching powder disinfection means to remove complete harmful bacteria present in water so that purpose we are adding bleaching powder and next after stirring the chemical elements coagulate into flocks that means precipitates and settle down in the bottom of so you see this here this is the first step this is a rapid mixing so in this case we are using lime alum and bleaching powder so it is a rapid mixing process step 1 so in this case we are using lime alum bleaching powder added to this raw water so in this case lime what purpose we are using to maintain alkaline condition it is very effective at alkaline condition alum used for to form uh, flocks with fluoride ions bleaching powder mainly used for disinfection purpose so next flocculation means it uh, when we are adding all these uh, chemicals in the raw water it forms flocks precipitates with fluoride ions this process is called flocculation it takes 40 minutes here ra rapid mixing means it form takes only 30 seconds in this flocculation method it takes 40 minutes and next pass it to the sedimentation tank so in this sedimentation tank do not disturb for 240 minutes so in this 2 to 3 minutes 3 hours so in this case all all heavy objects or heavy impurities or heavy solids settle down at bottom of the tank all the sediments are settle down at bottom of the 
tank. This process is called sedimentation. This step is called sedimentation. Next, filtration. So, in this case, we can remove any bacteria or impurities present in water by using filters. So, this process is called filtration. Next, disinfection. So, disinfection purpose, we are using bleaching powder. So, bleaching powder reacts with bacteria and kills the bacteria, destroy the harmful bacteria which are present in water. So, this step is called disinfection. And next, finally, pass it to the storage tank for our domestic usage purpose. So, this process is called defluoridation nalgunda technique, removal of excess of fluoride from water. So, what are the advantages of this defluoridation of nalgunda technique? So, this nalgunda technique is adaptable to domestic use because it is takes low price. It is because low price. So, nalgunda technique is adaptable to domestic use because low price and ease of handling, easily we can handle and bleaching powder also available less cost only, it is used for disinfection purpose. But what are the disadvantage? It is not suitable if the pH of uh, untreated water is alkaline. Alkaline water it is very effective, easily we can remove fluoride from water. If uh, it is not suitable, if the pH of untreated water is alkaline, alkaline, otherwise acidic or neutral, in this case it is less effective. And it is not suitable when the fluoride concentration is very high. In this case also it is not suitable. And what are the features of Nalgunda technique, main features of Nalgunda technique? So it is adaptable to domestic use, just now discussed already in this main advantages of this method. And simultaneous removal of color, order, turbidity. Turbidity means impurities which are present in this water. So, in this method, we can remove color, order, turbidity, bacteria and other organic contaminants which are present in this water. And next sludge generated is converted to alum for reuse. There is no wastage of any uh, chemicals or sludges, etc. It is also we can reuse. No handling of castic acids and alkalis. So that means local skills capability readily employable. The next one is needs minimum mechanical and electrical equipment. And no energy except muscle power for domestic equipment. Easily we can handle. And highly efficient removal of fluoride from 1.5 to 20 milligram per liter to desirable levels. To desirable levels. So in this class, we will learn about what is desalination by following followed by reverse osmosis method. This method is also called as hyperfiltration electrodialysis which is used in this most preferred in this water technology uh, treatment of water, hard water or sea water converted to normal drinking water. And one, one more topic is defluoridation of Nalgonda technique. In this case, how can we remove fluorine from water? I hope understood all. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.